Hello, my name is, uh, is Knut Frostad. I'm the uh, CEO of Navico, uh, that also owns the brand BNG, which is present on the boat behind me. And um, I have a long history in, in ocean racing, in addition to uh, now working in the boat industry. So I, I used to be the CEO of the Volvo Ocean Race for, uh, for eight years. And before that, I was also participating in the Volvo Ocean Race four times around the world, twice as a skipper, uh, and then some Olympic Games before that. So I have a long, uh, long history in sailing and I'm quite passionate about uh, ocean racing. Well, my overall impression of, uh, of this boat is, is very good. I think it's, uh, it smells quality. There's a lot of uh, really good quality equipment and I think the design is very much in, light, uh, in line with um, the current sort of uh, thinking in ocean racing. So um, it's the first sort of 30 foot boat I've seen that's really looking like it's a 2020 boat and it's um, so very good impression of the equipment, very good impression of the layout. I think uh, it looks like the people involved in this project have been spending a lot of time thinking about the details and putting some experience into it. I think what I like most with this boat, I think it gives a feeling it's quite solid. Uh, and for me, racing offshore, you know, you really have to trust the equipment. I like the sail plan a lot. Uh, it has quite an advanced sail plan, but very, it's, it's very, very accessible. I like the retractable uh, drive shaft of the propeller. Uh, I mean, that's uh, in a small boat like this to, to get rid of the sail drive and, and uh, the propeller shaft under the water is a, is a big impact on the drag. So it makes the boat a lot faster. And I think the, the general cockpit layout, it's, uh, it's simple, but it's very functional. So. Uh, Functional boat. I, it looks easy to sail fast with it. Uh, well, I'm a huge fan of one design. Those who know me in the racing knows that that's um, where I really believe the sailing needs to go. Um, in all racing uh, with boats, uh, the alternative to one design is a game where whoever spends the most money has the best chance of winning. And, and I think that's why one design is what everyone in the end loves. So. So typically when you ask racing sailors uh, if they have different boats, they all think they have the best boats when they start and when they finish, they all want the boat that won. So they all want the same boat in the end. <laughs> and, and that's why One Design is such a fantastic concept. And I, I think um, this boat to me um, is the future. It, it's, it's what sailing needs to be and it's what, what sailors like to do. So um, the fact that you race on the equal terms means that the best sailors are winning. And also that the sailors become better sailors because they are challenging each other and learning from each other, knowing that they have the same boat. Well, I know there's a, there's a few boats that are, are trying to be, uh, become the Olympic offshore class uh, for the world sailing. And, and I think this is a good candidate. Uh, to be an Olympic boat, um, you have to be able to function in a lot of conditions. So you can, the sailing venues around the world where that will be relevant is, is, are very, very different. I think the key is that the boat has to be extremely tight on the one design side um, and it has to be a quality boat because the boats will be used a lot and, and if in any Olympic uh, participation uh, people are going to train a lot and spend a lot of hours you know compared to any other racing so there's almost no scene where people are training more than in, in, in the Olympic scene so but to me, it looks like the boat is very accurate and it looks like the, the finish and the details are, are very exact. And I know they have spent some effort into that. So that's important to become an Olympic class. Yeah, no, I think the mixed offshore is a very interesting uh, part of Olympics. I've, I've done both offshore and Olympics, so I know uh, the differences. Uh, and I think that uh, for me, the offshore sailing is the most interesting part of sailing. Uh, it's the same intensity as you have with, uh, with round the boats racing, but, but it's much longer, much more an endurance sport. And I've been a big promoter of uh, bringing women into the sport in the World Ocean Race. We, we brought women in and, and, uh, and now that's part of the race. And I think it's extremely interesting to have that combination in, uh, in sailing and to be a promoter of uh, gender equality. It's, it just makes it a lot more interesting for more countries and, and more people to follow the sport. So that's good. Yeah, I've done a bit of offshore uh, single-handed sailing. I mean, not really around the world or anything like that. Um, I think the, the interesting th thing with short-handed sailing is that you have to become a very good sailor in every discipline. So you have to be good uh, trimming, driving, navigating, doing the weather, uh, making decisions, uh, know how to fix the boat. So short-handed sailors in general are, in my view, the best sailors in the world uh, today because they are really all-round and they they are very good at 
everything on the boat. <laughs> and, and they are on a very high level today. So it's probably the discipline in sailing that has accelerated the most the last 10 years. And, and uh, the absolute best short the sailors we have today, and uh, Francois Agabar and Thomas Coville and these guys are, are, in my opinion, the best sailors in the world. Equipment uh, Dealer have used in this boat is, is really high quality. Um, and that's really important because uh, when you have one design, you should never try to compromise on that because it's going to be used a lot and it looks functional to me. They have obviously taken the best, uh, the, the best uh, instruments that you can get uh, with the plotters and, and the whole sail setup, uh, racing setup from B&G. So simple but very visible and, and very accessible. I obviously like a lot to have the, the, M, the multifunction display in the cockpit. Uh, then you have it accessible at all times. And um, no, I think it's a functional boat with very good equipment. So I'm, I'm really impressed with it. The stealth drive uh, with the propeller is, um, is a cool feature. I think uh, we had that in the Volvo Ocean Race as well with the Volvo 70s. Um, I think Dealer have found a really good solution to it because it's quite complex to get uh, the propeller up in the hull and make that tight and make it smooth and make it uh, accessible. But I just went through with them how they retract and, uh, and, and extend the shaft and it is very fast, very quick. Uh, it seems to work really well. And it obviously is a feature that takes away a lot of the drag on the boat. So it's a, it's a really strong performance feature and it's going to make the boat quite a lot faster. So. So that's, a, that's absolutely a nice, a nice piece. And uh, in general, it feels solid. Uh, the cockpit is, uh, is large and uh, it has the trimming functions very accessible. So I like it. I mean, would I sail this boat with my family? Well, I would absolutely do that. Um, I think that this is a fun boat to sail. I think it's, it's quite easy to sail. I think it's, it, the layout is, is, uh, is safe and, uh, and, and really, very accessible, so it's not a complex boat to bring children or, or bring your family. I have sailed a lot with my kids and my wife, so, so for them this would be a very fun boat to sail with. And I think it has all the room inside, it has a really big space inside. Uh, nice, nice bunks both fore and aft and, uh, and plenty of space really. So, And this is a use, useful boat. A lot of the things you see inside boats today are not used so much, but in this boat you have the space where you need it um, and plenty of storage. So. No, I think this will be a, a fun boat to bring the family out with.